My uh, next speaker is uh, Mr. Jeff uh, Thomas, Thompson, rather, founder and chair of the Youth uh, Charter uh, in the UK. Uh. Fellow delegates, I shared with you a journey that reflected sport for development for peace and how it improved the lives of young citizens and the wider community and the global society as a whole based on the United Nations principles and UN charters, the Youth Charter was born out of the bidding, hosting and legacy of major games. It also responded to the disaffection, disadvantage and disillusionment of young people who are failed by education and become caught up in the negative lifestyle choices that would see them violent or extreme in their behaviour and impact upon society. As I said, sport and the arts, I believe, are a fundamental human right and a vaccine and antidote in bringing cultures, backgrounds and societies together. I also made reference to the inspiration of the late Secretary General Kofi Annan. And the work is also inspired by a late sporting activist and humanitarian, Arthur Ashe, the former Wimbledon champion and tennis great, who first addressed the UN in the 70s to promote the notion of what is now sport for development for peace. There are many sporting ambassadors for the UN who promote the UN family agencies. However, we don't coordinate well a team effort in making sure we make more efficient and effective use of our resources. As 2000 saw, the Millennium Development Goals focus on Africa. The Sustainable Development Goals now reflect the UN global family across the five continents. The major games, whether it be all Africa Games, the African Cup of Nations, the Commonwealth Games, the FIFA World Cup, either men's or women's company taking place, women's in Paris, or the Olympic Games and Paralympic Games provide that very opportunity. And the culmination of the journey that saw the London 2012 Olympic and Paralympic Games arguably reflect the greatest legacy effort of what Sport for Development for Peace could represent for young people and communities locally and globally. The East End of London is now a hive of activity, with the London Legacy Development Corporation now delivering that inspiring a generation legacy opportunity for communities in the East End of London that has a social, cultural and economic impact, reflecting the 135 plus cultures that certainly represent the students of the University of East London. The University of East London equally pioneered the legacy effort and used all of its resources of student innovation, creativity and research along with leading academics and contributed to what now sees the Youth Charter joining the University of East London in the exciting Vision 2028, giving back to its community. Our mission and our values are reflected in that very need to engage, equip and empower. And by that, engage our young people with sport, art, culture and digital, equip them with the mental, physical and emotional resilience and character, and then empower them with an inspiration or aspiration of further and higher education, employability or entrepreneurship. That is an ecosystem that is ideally and replicable in every continent that the Youth Charter's work currently reflects and represents. And in 2016, as will be in 2020, when the Games come to Tokyo, we will be producing reports and recommendations that take the UN IOC Accord and turn it into a tangible call to action and that takes the Sustainable Development Goals into a framework that delivers a model, a community campus, that allows young people to have somewhere to go, something to do and someone to show them, an intergenerational benefit that sees community empowerment and social coaches developing relationships of trust, confidence and respect. And based on our 2016 Legacy Impact Report, the seven recommendations that would see a better coordination of sport for development and peace and a movement across all five continents, the establishment of the UN IOC Accord and UN Sustainable Development Goal Framework for the Sport for Development for Peace movement. Three, all major games that host legacy proposals and provide a social offset fund to represent the global philanthropic effort that invests 
in our young people and communities. And we should administer it through the World Bank. These are institutions that can coordinate and make better and efficient use of the limited resources we have and that is so important for the research that we need to make the case for policy, strategies and implementation in the future. We also want to develop a digital platform to map, track and measure the impact of our respective approaches. Without the real empirical evidence or the quantitative and qualitative data, we <coughs> cannot make the case for greater investment and we cannot and should not beg on the basis that we need a handout. This is a justifiable investment with a social, cultural and economic win-win-win for young people, society and the institutions that serve them. We also want to establish a global sport for development for peace coordinating effort of research. As I said, the leading institutions in the University of East London have eminent professorial expertise, some here today and have shared with you, but many students who come from the UN family, who equally upon studying at UEL, can go back to their respective communities and ensure that currency of diversity and equality and inclusion is realised. We want to establish a million social coaches across all five continents to build those relationships. But finally, seven, at a time where safety and the protection of our young people and women are so critical and important, we want to work and coordinate and see better implemented the UN Child Protection and Violence Exploitation and Abuse Programme that equally, having been launched and not known, main, known to any and many, seem to coordinate and ensure that every single young person, every single community can enjoy what sport and the arts can do culturally and digitally in improving their life chances. Every effort that we make on the basis of what we are proposing requires every single effort of every single UN family that will have seen with UNICEF yesterday have soccer aid. Many of the global icons of sport and the arts came together culturally and played a football match that was supposed to transcend the pitch and improve lives. I will be making the report available to you, but in summary, it's a call to action. It starts in the east end of London. It is local as it is global, and the University of East London and the Youth Charter are now coordinating over and hosting over 26 agencies that with the London Legacy Development Corporation will see a legacy opportunity for all. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Thompson, for, for this interesting talk. And now it's time, uh, we have like another five minutes to uh, round this up. Any questions? No? Sir? No, we had, I think, his chance. Uh, We've finished with him. So, yeah, please go ahead. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Thompson. Morning. Can I just say that I believe what you're doing is phenomenal. Sport is the way to go forward. As we look at AI coming through, where will our young people go and work? Sport will be the key to actually pull them through and to give them areas to work. So congratulations on your work. Thank you. The one point I would like to make for every major games and every major sporting event or cultural event or artistic event, there are over 130 different careers and jobs that are required to deliver. When I competed, I needed 16 professionals from nutritionists to doctors to coaches to accountants, to psychologists. They were all part of my team. And that is why I believe that sport does unify, but it mustn't be just about the winning. It has to be about the taking part. Monsieur Coubertin, the founder of the modern day Olympics, advocated this, and many others are doing so. But the Olympic family and the Paralympic family are now waking up to the very important need that when we see sportsmen and women representing all five continents, there must be a social, cultural and economic impact and benefit from those communities, villages, cities and communities that they come from.
I'm always inspired when there are no questions. That means everybody has understood everything that I've shared with you. Sport is the common language. One thing I will say, the best software our young people have is between their ears. Let not artificial intelligence ever replace that God-given gift they have to use their software more productively and more impactfully for themselves and the societies in which they live. Sorry, Dr. Yes, thank you very much. You invited questions. I will ask you a more uh, delicate one. Uh, the, the sports arena are also a sort of mirror of the society. And what we can see in, the, in those arenas is, is you know, a kind of political reflection of what is going on in the society. Among them, the racist discourse and the racist be behavior. How do you think that uh, you know, this uh, noble uh, destiny of a sport can be reconciled with this kind of uh, hate expression that we too often hear in the, in the stadium? That's an excellent question. Sport reflects society, but that's why I believe it can influence society. It both unifies as well as divides. But what I like to believe is that the world is about balance, and at the moment, the extreme views that are expressed, the unacceptable levels of intolerance and injustice that results, means there must be that counterbalance. We must see that movement of sport for good, sport for development, sport for peace, sport for education, sport for health, but the digital age, the AI age, is where young people are most engaged, interested and seduced. So we have to look at an intergenerational approach, but we have to make our messages stronger and more coordinated whenever we can. I'm always amazed for those who want to do so much bad, how quickly and efficient they are in doing that bad. And I would just like to think that those of us who want to do some good would be equally as efficient, effective and determined in our approach. But the one thing we cannot do is sleepwalk. And I always say to the students, where, wherever I go throughout the world, I was recently in Denver, Colorado, for the Global Mind Education Conference, and it again looked at artificial intelligence, the digital age, and what it was doing to improve, especially students who come from the so-called developing countries. And I want to use that word very guarded. There's no such thing as a developing country or a developed country. The developing countries use their resources more creatively and more innovatively. And that is why I believe the digital age can actually be used with the right world-class research to actually transcend and engage, equip and empower. But our major events must always, as is in Paris with the FIFA Women's World Cup, where the opportunity is there to positively shine a light on all things that we can do to counterbalance the negative darkness that prevails at certain times in our lives and as a global community. Any other ones? Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Thompson, for this uh, mind-boggling uh, uh, talk. And uh, the way forward is, uh, of course, it's youth, and, and you're doing the best uh, of the best to uh, invest and to uh, bring youth together and to work uh, towards their success and uh, their settlement in the jobs. So please remember, if we all help and do a little bit, it will make a big difference.